So today we want to take a look at some of the features of the TI-84 graphing calculator and we're going to do that here with our study of quadratic functions. I have a given equation here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it on my calculator. And you remember a second degree function, a quadratic function, has a graph which is a parabola which opens up or down. And as you're going to soon discover in your further study of this, that when the negative, when there's a negative coefficient on the x squared, the graph's going to open down. So that's just some advanced knowledge here. So over on my calculator here, I'm going to go to y equals up on this menu, and I'm going to type in my equation negative, and the negative button's down below here. Don't use the subtract button or you'll get an error. Negative 2x up here squared plus 6x plus 5 and I'm going to graph this. Now just before I do that uh, just go, up to, uh, go over to here to window on the menu and you'll see that your window dimensions are set from a low x of negative 10 to a high x of 10 for the horizontal and same for y from negative 10 to 10 and let's just see what happens here when we graph we do get a picture of our parabola and typically what you'll be asked to do is to um, adjust your window so that, and you can see the directions here, adjust your window dimensions so that the shape of this function is evident, which in this case is a problem. So using a 10 by 10 window, um, that's happening automatically. And what we'll typically ask you to do in terms of just recording your work is to show your viewing window in this grid over here. All right, so I'm just going to draw what I see here over in this window. And under y1, I've entered the function, so let's put the equation in. Okay, I'm just sketching in my x and y axes. And my graph looks something like that. Now these sections down below here are just asking you to record what your window dimensions were. And mine were negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10. Alright, so now the calculator has some other features that allow you to find certain things about the graph. So let's just go through some of these. G of 1, now remember G of 1 just means that if I was to put 1 into the function, what Y value would I get? So on your calculator you can simply, you can just press the trace button and press X equals 1, enter, and it'll tell you the y value is 9. So g of 1 is 9. g of negative 2, just type in negative 2, enter, and the y value is negative 15. It's off the screen because it's down here somewhere. Another thing we might want to find on this graph is the vertex, which is the high point right here. It's a maximum point. So to get that, I'm going to go to the menu over here under trace, the top part of it which is in blue. So I'm going to activate that second function calculate. And because the vertex is a maximum point, I'm going to go down to number four. All right. Now, a mode has been activated which is going to ask me three questions. And you'll see the first question is the left bound. What the calculator wants me to do is to put my cursor just to the left, right around here somewhere just to the left of the vertex. So with my arrow keys, you can see it's getting close. It's on the left. Okay, I'm just going to press enter. Then I'm going to move it just to the right of the vertex. Okay, on the right side, enter. And then my guess is, just to narrow it down a little bit more, I'm going to put it sort of right on as close to it as I can get. You might be able to see there's arrows on either side where we put our left and right bound. We're just trying to tell the calculator, look at this area for the highest y value. Press enter, and I get my point. Now sometimes the calculator will do things like this to you. Um, the vertex, if we did it algebraically, we would find is 1.5 exactly. So when you see something like that, it's pretty much likely that the value is exactly what it's close to, 1.5 in this case. So 1.5 comma 9.5 is the coordinates of the vertex. The axis of symmetry is the reflection line down the middle. Okay, And that's the x value of the vertex. So the equation of that black line is just x equals 1.5. 
the y-intercept, the y-intercept happens when x is zero. So I could put x manually in to the equation and figure out y. With my symbolism, that's just g of zero. When x is zero, what is y? So I could get that on the calculator just by pressing trace, x equals zero, and it's five. All right, my x-intercepts, which are here and here, there is a button under the Calculate menu once again. So I'm going over to the Calculate button, Second Function Trace, and I'm looking for zero, x-intercept. And this button works similar to the Maximum button, except this time we put our cursor just to the left of the x-intercept we're trying to find. So there it is, just to the left of this x-intercept, press Enter. Arrow over, just to the right of that x-intercept, press Enter and then as close to it as we can get, negative 0.68 rounded. All right, and if that was a little fast, I'm going to do it again because I have a second x-intercept. So second function, trace, the zero button. Let's trace over just to the left of this x-intercept. Okay, close enough, enter. A little arrow goes on, so the calculator is saying, look to the right of this, move it to the left, look to the left of that, and then enter, or sorry, guess, put it as close as you can get it. It's saying y would be 0 if x was 3.68. So that's my x-intercept. And then domain and range. Um, again, we don't need to use the calculator for every single one of these. I know that my x values, um, I can use any x values for this function. And the range is related to what the high value on the graph was, which we calculated to be 9.5. So the range is anything less than, y less than or equal to 9.5. All right, let's take a look at another example, this time one related to a practical situation. Problem says, from a cliff 110 meters above the water, a stone is thrown upwards. And its height, um, h, and h is measured in meters, above the ground after t seconds is given by this quadratic equation. All right, just before we graph this, let's just make sure we got a little bit of a grasp as to what's possibly happening here. Our dependent variable is h, measured in meters. Our independent variable is t, measured in seconds. So the height of the rock, since we're throwing it from 110 meters, would make sense that the height of the rock from the water level is 110. And then we're then throwing it up. And as time goes on, one second, two seconds, three seconds, you can imagine that the rock's going to go up. And eventually, its height's going to be down here at zero. All right? So I have a bit of a picture as to what this uh, graph might look like. All right, so I go over to my calculator. I type in my equation, which I've done here in advance. I go to press graph, and all I'm seeing is sort of a blip going up, a line going up, a line coming down. And that's because the window dimensions are not have not been set uh, to reasonable values yet. What I'm really seeing is just I'm seeing the graph coming down like that, and I'm kind of looking at a view sort of like that. So I'm seeing the two lines going up. All right, well, I want to see the full picture. And I need to put my window dimensions, or adjust my window dimensions so that that happens. So how do you set window dimensions when the standard of negative 10 to 10 uh, uh, doesn't give you a, pic a full picture of what is going on? Okay, so you have to think about this. And since t is time, you just think about, you know, how long is it going to take for you, if you start at time equals zero and throw a rock upwards, for it to come down and land. Okay, you know, how long is that going to take? Well, you know, no more than 10 seconds probably. So, but this negative 10, negative 10 seconds, that's all this space back here to the left of the graph. I don't need this to be negative 10. The first time that's even reasonable is zero. Okay, so you say, well, make that zero. I like to make that a little bit less than that just so I can see just a little bit to the left of, of the axis in this case. So I'm going to go from negative 1 to 10. The scale just means how many markings are going to be on there. There's going to be one marking per every unit, so you know one is fine. I'll leave that alone. 
my y, which is really my height, what's my low height and my high height? Well, in terms of this rock, it's going to hit the water when the height is zero. So again, I could make the height zero. Again, I'm going to make it a little lower than that. Maybe, maybe I'll leave it at negative 10 meters. Okay, so that's like 10, 10 meters below the water level. Okay. Um, the high height. Well, I was told in the problem that we're starting off at 110 meters above. And then if I'm throwing it upwards, the rock's going to go higher than 110 and then it's going to come down. So this number here has to be higher than 110 for sure. Maybe 150, maybe higher than that. So let's just try 150. And let's graph and see what happens. And there we go. I get a pretty decent looking picture of the rock's motion. All right, so I want to record my picture here in the grid that's provided. Okay, so let's take a look at our window dimensions. Negative 1 to 10 for the high and low x. And negative 10 to 150 for the high and low y. Write your equation that you've entered, which is obviously the one given, so that's easy. And then just a quick sketch of what you are looking at. All right, now we want to find the height of the ball after 0, 1, and 5 seconds. So these are t values. So if I plug 0 in for t into the formula, that one we've already talked about and looked at, if I put 0 in, I simply get the number at the end, which is the vertical intercept of 110. It's like the starting height the height after one second and the height after five seconds. Okay, press trace and then one. So after one second the ball's at 122.1 meters and after five seconds it's 72.5 meters. Find the maximum height reached by the stone. Well that would occur at the vertex right here. How long does it take to reach this height? So I'm asked two things. I'm asked what is the maximum height? Question mark and at what time does this occur? Well, both of these pieces of information are given to me by the vertex. So I want the maximum value of the parabola, second function trace, maximum button, move my cursor first to the left of the maximum, enter to the right of the maximum, and then as close as I can get to it. So 1.73 and the vertical 124.75. All right, and we need to answer the question, not just put it in coordinate form. This is the time, and this is the height. So the stone reaches a maximum height of 124.75 meters after 1.73 seconds in the air. And the final question is, after how long does it take the ball to reach the water? Well, if I go back to my picture, the ball is reaching the water right here, which is an intercept, a zero of the function. So I need to get that uh, horizontal intercept. Now you'll see on my calculator that my horizontal axis is a bit hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust my window just so that the y min's a little lower, which will show my horizontal intercept, uh, horizontal axis up a little higher. There we go. And now I'm going to use the zero button under the calculate menu. Second function calculate number two, zero. Move it to the left of the zero. Move it to the right of the zero. Move it close to the zero and press enter. So it's 6.78 is the zero which means it takes 6.78 seconds for the ball to reach the water.